Yeah, good day, everyone. I'm uh, Dick Schmeller. I'm currently an uh, AXA research professor um, in Toulouse, in the Toulouse region, uh, working on functional ecology of uh, mountains. Looks a little bit far away, but uh, you will see uh, what um, I can tell you about the global conservation implications of uh, salamander eater outbreaks. Uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, interesting uh, topic and um, I will show you why. Salamanders are not everywhere. That's already something to, to know. Um, there are some low species richnesses in, in, in Asia, in Russia, um, but uh, the highest um, species richness can actually be found in Europe, um, some parts of, uh, of Asia and North America. So of the more than 8,000 amphibian species, 600 are salamanders. Uh, this is quite quite interesting to know because uh, salamanders are just beautiful. Look at look at this. It's Ambistoma annulatum, the ringed salamander. Ambistoma bishopi, a reticulated flatwood salamander. Another flatwood salamander. It's, it's just, if you look at these colors and, and these forms, it's just amazing. So uh, the slender salamanders, they have this super long tail, which the others uh, don't. And uh, then uh, there are uh, quite a few salamander species also in, uh, in Turkey uh, with this Anatolian Lycian salamander, uh, which I had the chance to have had already in my hands. Uh, they're very cute and very beautiful and very colored. And then uh, also some even don't have a, a common name. So Neurargus traurii, uh, plaque with yellow spots, just beautiful. This is what, what we need to conserve. This is just something which we need to keep in mind when we are um, talking about uh, conservation of, of salamanders. The ecology of salamanders is also very important to keep in mind because I'm sure that most of you have never seen a salamander or if they have seen it, it may be uh, in a zoo or uh, a captively bred individual. That's because salamanders are cryptic and uh, very difficult to observe. Um, in, in some areas, when they find very good conditions, uh, like, like here in, uh, in this kind of areas, they can be abundant. So in a variety of humid forests, uh, grassland habitats, but also in some caves and habitats, uh, humid uh, uh, only for a short time, you can find uh, these beautiful species, uh, these salamanders, but you need to look very, very closely uh, because, as I said, they're very cryptic and most of them are not out during the day. Why are they interesting? Because they regulate food webs and contribute to ecosystem resilience or resistance equaling stability in many different ways. Wow, this is a big graph, I know, but um, it's just to give you an overview of what salamanders uh, can actually do. This is from a 2004 paper. Um, for me, it's quite funny to see 2004. Many of you might consider it old. Um, for me, it was just yesterday, but uh, yeah, that's how it goes. But the um, salamanders are keystone species. They regulate um, prey species diversity and lower trophic levels. I will come back to that in a little bit um, of time. But uh, this is there is a top-down uh, control where uh, top predators um, can have an impact on terrestrial and riparian um, uh, habitats uh, because they are occupying underground retreats. Um, and uh, therefore salamanders can affect uh, forest soil dynamics. Um, and there are then interactions also with small invertebrates, fungi, um, primary producer, producers and detritus litter. So this is extremely interesting to, to keep in mind uh, because in many cases 
uh, salamanders are um, not only uh, in old growth uh, forest, but they are also one of the first ones um, in, in these new forest succession stages. So via indirect cascading pathways, salamanders regulate the standing crop of primary production in ponds. But of course, salamanders are also prey. So they provide readily available and high quality source of energy and nutrients to the top predators. There are quite a few top predators, um, uh, including in, uh, also birds and, um, and mammals, foxes and so on. They can feed on some of the, of the salamanders. But this is part of an ecosystem because uh, ecosystem is nothing else than the result of interactions. But as one of the keystone species, the um, salamander is, is very central in these interactions. So by their positive association with increasing stand age, salamanders provide slowly available and retentive pools of energy and matter that lead to increased resistance resilience during several succession. So they are part of ecosystem stability. In a more recent paper from La King et al, just published this year, uh, this has been taken up again uh, and has been shown um, in, in a more modern way by also including uh, the microbiome uh, deco decomposition uh, rates in, in, in more detail. So salamanders prompt retention of poor quality oak, but not high quality maple litter. So there are some selective processes. Selective consumption, consumption of detrivore prey alters invertebrate functional composition. And the microbial community shifts reduce bacterial degradation of litter. So here um, salamanders have impact on all of these uh, species, uh, many typical soil species. So the detrivores increase the decomposition rates and the, uh, help also with the microbiome, which increases the decomposition rates. So it does have no impact on maple, but it has an effect on oak. So there is an important difference uh, in the different species. So the salamander can drive uh, community changes in, in such, uh, in such an, an ecosystem. And uh, this is extremely important to, to comprehend because salamanders then can also provide a very important service because they are in the center of the ecosystem functioning. And therefore, um, by analyzing abundance and, and richness of, of salamanders, we will have a cost-effective and readily, a readily quantifiable metric of ecosystem health and integrity. This is extremely important to keep in mind um, when we think of this species as a cryptic species, but still having a very big indicator value for our ecosystems and their health. So the effect of salamanders on ecosystem functions may be a balance of complex trophic cascades. As said before, there are direct predatory effects. There are indirect behavioral responses of prey to predators. Uh, there is moderated behavior of predators in response to intra-gill predators. Um, and there are changes in nutrient dynamics associated with changes in the foot web. And in this graph, which I will not explain in detail, so don't worry, uh, you can see with how many different species and species groups salamanders are interacting. So if you take out the salamander from such a network, everything else will change. And that's the value um, where we can say the salamanders and their uh, abundance, for example, are a very good indicator of all of this, which constitutes ecosystem health. 
So with this as the background, we need to now have a look at this salamander eater uh, fungal pathogen called Patagiochytrium salamandrivorans or B cell. Um, it's spreading. Uh, it actually infects and eats not only the fire salamander for which it was named, but it's also in infecting and killing the alpine newt, the palmate newt, the smooth newt, the Anatolian crested newt, the northern crested newt, and the marbled newt. So actually the name is wrong. It should not say Salamantrivorans, it should say Gautadivorans, because it is um, impacting on newts as much as on salamanders. And this is the, the latest distribution uh, which we have from Germany, um, a bit in, the, in Belgium here, um, where uh, you can see that actually we can now find B cell everywhere, even in the very south of, um, of Germany, where it's getting very close to um, the Alps. And in the Alps, we have a very emblematic species, the alpine salamander, um, which uh, would be very likely threatened with extinction when B cell gets to it. So we need to understand that these species, and here we are actually not only now talking about salamanders with their important functions, because also newts have important ecosystem uh, functions. These diverse ecological roles of salamanders in a larger term in a natural area underscore the importance of their conservation. So we need to preserve old growth forest because it's linked to salamander abundance and diversity. We need to keep shelters in that wood. That also includes tree stumps because that's the hiding spots where those uh, individuals will hide during the day when you try to find them. We need to maintain the typical breeding habitats, such as shallow ponds, slow flowing waters, and humid leaf litter, which are essential for the proliferation um, of these species. Given that their fecundity, meaning the amount of eggs they can produce, is rather low, each egg counts. So each habitat counts. So it's very important to invest, to understand what needs to be done uh, and to stop the destruction of, uh, of kind of wetlands where these species would thrive. We also need to understand that in many cases, and here I'm not necessarily talking about the European situation, uh, salamanders have very small distribution ranges. I've been able to work in Taiwan and I have been, I, kept, I held in my hands and I'm still very happy about this, one of the most rare salamander species, Hunobius formosanus in Taiwan, which is known from three locations only. And it's not an exception. There are quite a few of uh, other salamander species also in, in Turkey, which have very small distribution range. So they have not much possibilities to get away or to hide somewhere from human impact. They need to be conserved in those locations they are known from. Otherwise, as uh, Hinobius for Marzanus, they are um, endangered, will be critically endangered, and will get extinct very quickly uh, in, in the near future, because also they are suffering from global change, climate change, land use change, and pollution. With that, I thank you for your attention. Um, I would like to invite you to uh, have a look at my YouTube channel, where you can find quite a range of photos and some um, films and some uh, webinars uh, where I talk about mountains, uh, amphibians, and many other things. I thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.